Hey everyone, today we're going to look at how to set up Apache Guacamole on a Synology NAS. So Apache Guacamole is a clientless remote desktop gateway and it basically runs in a browser and it allows you to connect to different systems using RDP, VNC, and SSH. It also allows Telnet and Kubernetes, but we're not going to be taking a look at that in this tutorial. So basically, you manage everything in a central location, you're able to access all of your systems through a web browser, and everything just functions very well. So I just created a tutorial on how you could set this up on a Raspberry Pi, and that's kind of what I was testing it out on. But I try and put as much on my Synology NAS as I can. Now, as everybody knows, these Synology NAS devices don't have the computing power of more powerful servers. But for some of these Docker containers, they're great. And Apache Guacamole is one of those examples. So it's very easy to set up. It works very well. And overall, everything has been very stable for me, which is really all you want from a remote desktop connection manager, because you want to ensure that you're always able to get to those systems. So real quick before we get started, I just want to mention that I have full written instructions for everything in the description of this video. So if you haven't done so already, you have to download Docker from Synology's Package Center and you have to install it. And once you're done with that, it's going to automatically create a Docker folder. And inside of that Docker folder, we're going to create an additional folder and we're going to name that Guacamole. Once that's done, you can open up Docker. You can head over to the registry section and you can search for Guacamole. So we are going to download the OZNU slash guacamole image file. So make sure that you use this one in specific. Once it's done downloading, you can head over to the image section and you can double click the guacamole image and it will launch the configurator. So give your container a name and then you have to check off the box that says execute container using high privilege. So in every one of my tutorials, I try and create containers, Docker containers, where you do not have to use high privilege. And the reason for that is it's just security. I, I don't want to have to give my containers high privilege. Now, if you don't set this, it's not going to work. I don't know if that's a version issue, meaning that a future update will fix that, or if that's just because that's how it runs on these Synology NASs, but this is actually a very important setting. Now, I'm not saying this to scare you. You don't really have anything to worry about. I'm just letting you know that you are giving this container high privilege, which is the equivalent of super user access. So after you do that, select advanced settings, and then you're going to have to enable auto restart. After that, head over to the volume section, and we are going to map that uh, Docker and guacamole folder to the slash config mount path. Next, head over to the port settings, and then under the local port, you're going to change auto to 8080. Um, now, if you're using 8080 for anything else, you're going to have to change this to something else. It doesn't matter what you pick. You just have to make sure you remember what you use and it's not something that you're currently using. After that, you can apply the settings and this will create the container. Now, the last thing that I want to mention is that if you are using Synology's firewall, and you probably should be, I have a video for that. I'll leave a pop up right now if you're interested in checking that out. Uh, but if you're using Synology's firewall, you have to go in and you have to create an allow rule for port 8080. Um, and like I said earlier, if you pick a different port, you have to use that port. So give it a few minutes and then you should be able to open a web browser and you can access Guacamole by using your Synology NAS's IP address and port 8080. Now, once you get to the landing page, it's going to ask you to log in. So you're going to log in with the username guacadmin and the password guacadmin. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to head over to the settings and the user section and we're going to create a new user. You have to make sure that you allow this user to administer the system. Um, and the reason for that is because we're going to be going in and we are going to then uh, save this. We're going to log out. We're going to log back in with that new user. And then you're going to go and you're going to delete this default guac admin user. So you're only going to have the user account that you just created. After that, the setup process of Guacamole is done. So what you can do now is you can go in and you can start to create your, um, your connections to your different systems. So I'm not going to go through each of them because it's a little redundant. But what you have to know is that you can create groups and you can create connections. So generally what I do is I create different groups based on the operating system. So I create one for Windows and I create one for Linux. And I manage all of my connections inside of those groups. So all the Linux systems go in the Linux group and all the Windows systems go in the Windows group. You don't have to do this. You could set this up however you want. I'm just using that as an example. 
So after that's done, you can go into a uh, new connection and this will be creating a new connection to a system. Now you'll give it a name, you'll specify the location and that's based on the groups that we just specified. Um, and then what you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to pick the type of connection that you'd like to use. So like I said earlier, we are looking at SSH, VNC and RDP. So if you're using a Windows system, you'll most likely be using RDP. If you're using Linux, you could realistically use uh, VNC or SSH. But the important thing that I wanna note here is that no matter what you're doing, the system that you're connecting to has to be configured to allow connections. So in the written instructions, I have a few examples of how you can set up RDP, VNC, or SSH on your system. Uh, but it's very important to note that the, the system that you're connecting to has to be configured. So if you just install Apache Guacamole and you don't actually configure any of those external systems, you're not gonna get anywhere. So I'm gonna demo this for you guys and I'm going to connect to one of my uh, Ubuntu systems. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into the network section and I'm going to connect to the uh, host name, ub-test, that's my Ubuntu test system, and port 5900. Now port 5900 is the VNC port. Um, 3389 is RDP and 22 is SSH. This might vary based on your systems, but generally those are the default ports. After that, I go into the authentication section and then I'll give my username and password. Now there are a ton of different settings in this section here and you can go through each of them. You can configure this exactly as you like, but these are the most important settings. So meaning if you want to connect to a external system, the only thing you have to do is give it a name, give the host name, the port, and the username and password, and then you will be able to connect in. So once that's done, you can go back home and you can click the, uh, the server name and you will automatically connect in. Now this is using a web browser. I am connected to my Ubuntu desktop and I'm able to use this just like I would use any other VNC client. So it's very powerful because you're managing everything centrally. So if you can envision all of your systems here in this list, you only have to log in, it doesn't matter what device you're on, but you'll be able to connect to all of your systems. And there's also some cool settings inside of the connection section where you're able to uh, do things like send wake on LAN commands. And what that allows you to do is that allows you to keep certain systems off. And then if you try and connect to it through this, it will actually turn the device on for you. So it's pretty cool and it's very powerful. So that's the whole setup process. I just wanna quickly talk about uh, multi-factor authentication and exposing this externally. So generally, the best thing that you can do is set up a VPN. And I have a tutorial on how you can set up OpenVPN on your Synology NAS, and I'll leave a pop-up and a link in the description for that. Um, but that's the best way, meaning that if you're outside of your network and you wanna connect back to any of these systems, you set up your VPN, you connect to that VPN, and then you can access everything. But in certain use cases, there are reasons why people would want to expose Apache Guacamole externally, meaning outside of your network. Now, if you do that, my recommendation is that you set up a reverse proxy. So you can set up a reverse proxy on a Synology NAS, or you can set up a reverse proxy using something like Nginx Proxy Manager or Traffic, but that's not enough. So while you'll be setting up a reverse proxy and you will have an SSL certificate assigned, you also need to ensure that you enable two-factor authentication. And two-factor authentication is actually very easy to set up. So stop the Docker container, and then you're gonna edit it, and you're gonna head over to the environment section, and you're gonna add a new entry, and you're gonna name the variable extensions, and the value you're gonna set as auth-totp. You can then save this and apply it, and when you log in again to Apache Guacamole, you are automatically going to be prompted to set up multi-factor authentication. So you can use Authy or Google Authenticator or any authenticator app that you want, but after you do that, multi-factor authentication will be fully set up. So that wraps up the tutorial for today. Like I said earlier, this is one of the Docker containers that runs really well on a Synology NAS. And since most people leave their NAS running 24 seven, it's a perfect candidate for this type of tool. So thanks a lot for watching. If you guys like these types of tutorials, please consider subscribing to the channel. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. And if this video helped you out, please give it a thumbs up. Thanks guys.